JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, and welcome to JSA TV. We've got a good show for you, friends. I'm here with Mr. Philip Koblenz. Phil is the COO and co-founder of New York Internet, or NYI. Phil, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for having me, Dean. All right, Phil. So um, you're here to uh, – you had a big milestone this year. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about that? So uh, this year is our 20th year in business. We started in 1996, um, July of 1996 to be precise. And uh, I had a lot more hair back then. Um, and uh, uh, I was just a kid. So there are depressing elements of it. Um, but uh, in this industry, it's, um, it's, it is quite the milestone, particularly – being, you know, the same company with the same kind of um, outlook and, and the same founder is still, still steering the ship, um, I think gives us um, a, a unique aspect of it, that, that, that's for sure. Absolutely. So, Phil, 20 years is a long time, as you mentioned, in this industry. Um, how have things changed? Um, you know, I, I, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a saying that says the more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, at the end of the day, um, things certainly changed in the last 20 years in terms of, um, you know, weeding out the weaklings and making sure the facilities um, are, are kind of all up to snuff and all have, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, the top tier, top tier infrastructure and, and, and high uptimes. But at the end of the day, uh, as um, technology has evolved, um, the underlying infrastructure is, is remarkably similar. Um, it's, it's, you know, large scale, uh, and redundant air conditioned rooms with copper touching copper and glass touching glass. Um, and what's really changed is, you know, kind of what, what our involvement in that process is. Um, and, and, and that's changed from, um, you know, data center companies like us being mostly hands off to the data center becoming the facilitator of, of a solution. And, and I think that's really where, where things have changed. Outstanding, Phil. Thank you. Um, so a, a topic that is near and dear to your heart, the cloud. Um, why don't you tell I've never heard us. Of, I've never heard of that before. What, what is that? <laughs> why don't you tell um, our viewers a little bit about what kind of deployments that you are at, what kind of cloud deployments you are, uh, you're currently seeing? So um, that word uh, means many different things to many different people. Obviously, you have public cloud deployments like AWS and, and Google Compute, and to the extent that, that there, is a, there is some element of customers where we manage deployments in that environment, but for the most part, um, we're seeing that as an extension of um, the, the resources that are provisioned with, within our data centers. So uh, we have our own uh, cloud environment uh, built on VMware um, where, where we provide uh, private cloud services, which is essentially dedicated resources um, um, you know, for, 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 for high performance requirements um, for high security uh, customers. And then of course we have customers that leverage the, the bare metal or, or co-location uh, elements that we have. So you put all those things together and you have another overused word, hybrid, which is uh, the majority of the, de the, the deployments that, that we're seeing certainly uh, where, you know, you take basically a company's um, overall requirement um, and you list it on, on you know, a piece of paper, a spreadsheet, or, or whatever. And there are elements of their applications that lend themselves to a bare metal or co-located deployment where, you know, they, they have high security or they need to have a consistency of performance that just is more cost effective um, in, in a dedicated server or a co-located environment. And then you have elements of that application that make more sense in a private cloud deployment where they still have similar requirements on a security, from a security standpoint, but need the flexibility of provisioning those resources on the fly. Um, and then you have elements of that environment, whether it be for bursting or DR or R&D, um, that lend themselves better to a public cloud deployment where you have, you know, access to, you know, AWS's APIs or Google Compute's APIs, where you can spin up instances on the fly, but it's really more of a get in, use it, and get out. Um, type of methodology where it's really just in time. If you're testing something or trying to prove something out before you allocate resources to it, that's the, that's the best place to be. So the majority of, of you know, the, the power users that we're seeing come in, either in technology or in publishing or um, in, 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 in legal or financial words, worlds, have elements of all of these 
um, solutions. Um, and our job as a data center these days is to facilitate those things. And we do that by, um, you know, having the cloud physically on site, uh, our VMware made cloud that is, so giving them the ability to do high speed, you know, one gig, 10 gig, 40 gig cross connects into that, that cloud, and then having relationships such as, you know, Megaport and, and, and other direct connect type of relationships that allow them to have direct access into cloud providers like AWS or Google Compute and, and Azure. Um, and again, our job as kind of a dying breed of, of more hands-on, high-touch um, data center infrastructure providers is to facilitate their access to all of those things. Excellent, Phil. Thank you for entertaining my uh, my cloud question. I know how much you love doing that. Um, so a, I, listen, is, I, I will say I will I will say one more thing, which is I have fallen in love with and kind of make this sticker my mantra. <laughs> um, and it's true. I mean, it's just another computer, which is why um, you know the data center in and of itself, that underlying infrastructure, hasn't really changed. It still lives in the same room. It's just about how how you use it. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Phil. Thank you very much. So listen, after, uh, after 20 years in business, NYI clearly has shown that it has, is, it's turning corners um, as quick, if not quicker, than the rest of the industry. However, the next five years probably is going to, um, is going to uh, be that much more evolutionary than the last five or, say, 10 or even 20 years. What do you see on the horizon over, the, say, let's go with the next five years? You know, it's, it's interesting. Again, I don't see much change in terms of what the underlying infrastructure that runs the Internet and runs these applications is. I think what's going to change is the way um, the deployment mechanisms for those types of applications um, evolve. So you have things like Docker and, and Kubernetes and, and a lot of these deployment engines that um, are, are kind of taking over these hyperscale deployments. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, the... Um, the trend, there, there is a trend that we're seeing for large scale public cloud deployments being brought back into infrastructure. Um, and I think that gets sped up by making, by getting rid of the logistical hurdles that are associated with, you know, owning infrastructure and, and owning um, uh, your, your own footprint. Um, so, you know, I think the, the more data centers start to embrace those things and, you know, we have partnerships with Dias and um, and, and, and pack it, and, and the idea is to create this kind of containers on metal um, environment that bridges the gap between what makes sense in a cloud environment and what is just more cost effective and efficient um, in, in a data center and, and, and infrastructure environment, um, and, and making those two worlds closer and closer and getting rid of um, some of those logistical hurdles um, is, is going to be an important part of what takes us not only through the next five years, but, but beyond that as well. Outstanding. Phil, thanks so much for being here. That's all for now, folks. Uh, again, Phil, I can't thank you enough for your candor today, and thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.